Before this video gets started, I'm doing online physics and math Skype tutoring. For more information, go to dotsandtutoring.simplybook.me. On to the video. What's going on, smart people? Initially, I wanted today's video to be on Dirac notation, but that can be a little bit abstract, so I figured we'd build our way up to it by first going over dot products of complex vectors. And before we get into that, I think it might be useful to formalize dot products that we're all comfortable with in a bit more of an abstract way by describing them in terms of matrix multiplication. So let's go ahead and draw some regular vector that's real. Or it's actually going to be two vectors. And this is going to be pointing in the y hat direction. This is going to be pointing in the x hat direction. We're going to take two vectors. This will be alpha and this will be beta. It's no secret that alpha dot beta can be written in terms of taking the products of their components and then summing them up. That's just alpha 1, beta 1, plus alpha 2, beta 2. Or in a more compact way, it's sum over i of alpha i, beta i. Not blowing any minds here. In quantum mechanics, it's really common to express vectors not in this way, but more so in terms of column and row vectors. So we're going to see how the definition of the dot product changes when we switch to that notation. So let's go ahead and rewrite our vector alpha in terms of a column vector, alpha 1, beta, or alpha 1, alpha 2. And then we're going to do the same thing for beta. Beta is equal to a column vector, beta 1 beta 2. Now how does alpha dot beta change? We can approach this in a naive way and just take the two column vectors and see what happens when we do matrix multiplication. Okay, beta 2. But when we do this, we're going to get a square matrix now. So this is going to be alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2, alpha 2, beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2. So we're going the wrong way. When we take the dot product of two vectors, we should get a scalar, not a higher dimensional vector. So the secret to getting this relationship, getting this definition of the dot product, is actually to transpose one of these column vectors. So what we really want to do, so this is not correct, what we really want to do is we want to take the transpose of alpha times beta. And for a column vector, the transpose, nothing really changes about the components. The column just becomes a row. So this is just going to be alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. And if we do our regular matrix multiplication, we get alpha 1, beta 1, plus alpha 2, beta 2. Great. So we got the relationship that we want. Now what's something that we know about our dot products? Well. If we want to find the length of a vector, we know that it's the square root of the dot product with the vector and itself. In other words, the magnitude of alpha is equal to the square root of alpha dot alpha. And this quantity should be positive definite, meaning greater than or equal to zero, which by default means that it's going to be a real number. Okay, when we measure lengths, it should be positive or zero. And this should hold no matter what kind of vectors you use, which means if alpha and beta are complex, this should still hold. So let's introduce some complex vectors and see how tackling the problem this way, we run into some trouble. So let's say that alpha is equal to the column vector i0. Well then, alpha dot alpha, by using this method, it would be alpha transpose alpha, which is i0 i0, which is equal to i squared plus 0, which is equal to negative 1, which means that the magnitude of alpha here would be imaginary, it would be complex, which is a no-no. So there's something that we're missing, there's something that we need to introduce that preserves this identity here. And in order to do that, we have to introduce the idea of the complex conjugate. And the complex conjugate can be defined the following way. Say that we have some new vector that we call gamma that is equal to a plus ib, and then c plus id. The complex conjugate defined with this little asterisk is equal to a minus ib, c minus id. Okay, and you'll notice that the sign change 
only affects the complex part of this vector. So in the limit that there is no complex part, that gamma is purely real, the complex conjugate is just equal to itself. So in the limit that this vector is real, we should be able to get back our original definition of the dot product. So the new definition of the dot product, let's keep this vector here actually. The new definition of our dot product is that alpha dot beta is equal to alpha transpose complex conjugated dot beta. So if we want to find out what alpha dot alpha is, alpha dot alpha is equal to alpha conjugate transpose alpha, which is equal to, now that we're conjugating it and transposing it, it's going to be a minus i, 0. And then this one is staying the same, so it's i, 0, which is equal to minus i squared, which is equal to 1, which means that the magnitude alpha is also equal to 1. So now we finally satisfy this relationship that we need. Let's go through one more example of a complex vector dotted with itself. Uh, one thing to note is that though the magnitude of a vector dotted with itself should always be positive definite, that does not mean that the dot product between two arbitrary vectors needs to be. So the dot product of two vectors that are complex may still be complex. But let's go ahead and define some vector v that is equal to, let's make it 1 plus i and maybe minus i. And we want to find what v dot v is. Well, that is going to be equal to v transpose complex conjugated dot v normal, which is equal to, so the only term that is complex gets the, gets the sign flip, so it's going to be 1 minus i comma positive i, and then a column vector being the same thing, 1 plus i minus i, which is equal to 1 minus i, 1 plus i plus i times minus i. So we formal this out. This is going to be 1 plus i minus i minus i squared plus, well, let's just call it it's a minus actually, minus i squared, which is equal to 1. Well, i squared is minus 1 minus 1 times minus 1 is going to be plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. And it's pretty easy to see that if we took the magnitude of this, this would also be positive because it's 3. <laughs> okay? The last thing that I want to mention is that there's actually a name for taking the complex conjugate transpose of a vector. So the transpose complex conjugate is defined as the Hermitian conjugate. which is also defined shorthand to just be V dagger. So if you ever see this dagger, that means someone took the transpose of a vector and then complex conjugated it. And this pops up all the time in quantum mechanics, which you'll see tomorrow if we end up going over Dirac notation. Hope you guys found this video helpful and a little bit useful. Let me know in the comment section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.